Share your love and creativity for baking. Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Previously in part one of the Tastemaster SA Grand Finale, Max, Lacero and Molly had to create a modern wedding menu with five unique hors d'oeuvres inspired by Espresso Morning Show presenter Zoe Brown's engagement. It was Max who impressed with the hors d'oeuvre of the day, putting her a step ahead. Now they must complete their final bake and the winner will be decided at the picturesque Wineland's estate wedding venue, La Grande Jardin. What a journey it has been. This is the last time I'm cooking in this kitchen and it feels surreal at this point. It's so sad that it's the last day in the kitchen. I'm really going to miss working in this kitchen. Welcome back to the Tastemaster Kitchen, everyone. Now on to the final part of your final challenge. Wedding cakes are the grandest of all bakes. It's art. It's the centerpiece of the wedding. It forms so many of the fondest memories the couple and the guests would ever have. You will need to bake an amazing wedding cake that encompasses Zoe's fairy tale wedding. This is your final bake in the Tastemaster kitchen, so please make it count. You'll have 90 minutes to bake off your sponges. Remember, you're baking a two-tier wedding cake. After which, we will pack everything up and head over to Le Grand Jardin, where you'll have another two hours to decorate your cakes. I think that 90 minutes to bake a two-tier wedding cake is just wild. I have to work as fast as I can to make sure all my cakes bake through perfectly. Now, once we leave the kitchen, you will no longer have the use of your AEG oven. So make sure everything is baked. Well, contestants, are you ready to bake more memories for one last time in the Tastemaster kitchen? <laughs> well, your baking time begins in three, two, one. Good luck. Woo, good luck, everybody. I don't know a lot about wedding cakes. I've only ever made one three-tier cake, but I like the structure of them and how they are assembled. Am I seeing this correctly? Are you doing a three-tier cake? I am. I just thought, like, go big or go home. It's You're the right. final time I'm cooking in this kitchen, so I may as well make it worth it. So are you doing different flavors for each tier? No, so I'm just doing a classic lemon cake, and then I'm going to have a raspberry jam, as well as a dark chocolate ganache in the layers. Your picture looks very plain, very elegant, very simple. What is the wow factor here for you? So I went with your brief, the kind of modern Vogue bride, and I actually, on the Vogue website itself, there is an image of a very simple, classic wedding cake but with a lot of berries. Yeah. When you say Vogue, I think very grand. And that's exactly why I want to do three tiers. Very ambitious, Molly. Good luck. Thank you. I have a few cakes I have to make, so I am a bit stressed about the baking time, but thank goodness I have two AG ovens to use. Okay, talk us through the flavors of your tears and how Zoe inspired them. So Zoe loves fresh strawberries, so that's what I'm inspired by today. So the bottom tier is a chocolate sponge with chocolate buttercream as well as a strawberry jam to fill it. Then the top tier is a vanilla sponge with a lemon curd and a nice cream cheese frosting. Ooh. Do you think 90 minutes is enough for what you want to do? I never think the time in this kitchen is enough, <laughs> but today is something close to my heart. My first cake order was a customer my brother found on social media. So for me to start baking, it was really him believing in me. Wow. And today I just want to make him proud. Oh, that's oh. beautiful. Well, channel all of that positive energy. Best of luck. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank you, Lucifer. I'm adding my royal baking powder to the flour. It's gonna help aerate my sponge to make it extra fluffy, but then also hold the moisture from the sugar and the fat that I'm adding to my sponges. I'm starting with my berry compote because that is going to be an actual ingredient in my berry cake mixture. Once my berries are on the stove, I go and heat up some white chocolate because the batter for both the tiers of the cake contain melted white chocolate and you don't want it to be too hot when you're stirring it in. I'm doing a coconut and lime tier and I'm doing a mixed berry white chocolate tier as well. 
Both of them are going to have a white chocolate ganache. One's going to have a coulis filling. There's going to be some whipped ganache mousses as well. So a lot of components. So I'm just stressed about time a little bit. And in terms of decorations, what are you thinking? Quite simple and elegant, actually. I'm wanting to get some like pressed flowers just to put some like color on them. I'm not personally such a fan of like ornate fondant flowers. I prefer like real. What is your feeling around yeah, um, what is flowers, your Zoe? Because it is your wedding inspiration after all. I'm open to it. I think I'm an easy bride, but sometimes, you know, when you give someone a blank canvas, mm. they also don't know where to begin. Yeah. So sometimes being the easy going person is also a tricky one. Often the people who say they're the easiest going are the bridezillas. Just saying. <laughs> really? <laughs> just saying, Zoe. No, don't say that. <laughs> I mean, well, now's your time. If you don't like dried flowers, tell me. No, no, no. Stick to the vision you have for this cake. It sounds good. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> It's a bit of a mess, but it's a necessary mess because I have to end the season on a bang. So I'm a bit inspired by Max today. I want my cake layers to be as even as possible. So I'm actually measuring out each cake layer. You're the first one to have a batter in your pan. This is what I intended. I wanted to get my first cake in the oven with one hour left. What are you going to do to put yourself apart from the rest? She's a very elegant and romantic bride. And I want to show that through not only in the flavors, the texture of the cake, but also in the decoration. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you like the compliments? Ooh, that's sure. a big compliment. <laughs> Now that my three cakes have gone into the oven, I'm realizing I don't have enough batter for my last two. So I'm going to make a new batch, but a slightly smaller batch. Well, Molly, I'm so super proud of you. I mean, I can't believe you came in here as the youngster and you've really just uh, stepped up. Such a dream of mine to just be on the Tastemaster and just to have made it this far is just... Already feels <laughs> like a big achievement. Yeah. So. Obviously winning the Taste Master is the goal, but I have actually like proven to myself that this is what I can do with yeah. my life. So I'm very proud of myself. So it's a great confidence boost before you go into <laughs> the big world. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. Contestants, 30 minutes down. We have one hour left to complete our bikes. Let's go. Can I get a whoop whoop? Whoop whoop! <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling about this better consistency? I'm quite happy with it. I know it looks quite runny, but it is an oil-based cake and they tend to be more liquidy because you don't use a buttercreamy method. I'm just going to blend these guys. So Max, how, how big do you think the impact is going to be on your life personally? If you can execute this, win this thing. My gosh. I mean, everything would change because I would love to be a food presenter, honestly, on the show. I think it would just be the most fun, judging by how much fun we've had already. Um, and also, it's such a passion of mine that I really let like lie dormant for a while. And so to have that fire reignited through the competition and really fall in love with cooking, baking again. Gosh, I don't want to give it up. I love when this competition reignites a passion for cooking and baking. That's always my favorite story, so I love that. I'm giving my vanilla sponge the same respect I gave the chocolate sponge, so I'm also measuring out everything to the gram, but I'm cutting it close with the time. Will I have enough time to bake these sponges? Coming up, with less than an hour to go, will the Sejos cakes have enough time to bake through? Why not order from your oven? With precision, raise your standards and make it matter. AEG, challenge the expected. Share your love and creativity for baking. Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. This is definitely my messiest day in the kitchen, but I feel like it's fine. My day had to come at some point. Molly, it's looking <laughs> quite wild here. I don't know what's up with the mess today. What are you working on on the stove over there? I'm working on my chocolate ganache to go with my raspberry jam as fillings in my cakes. The only thing I have to do tomorrow is the icing and then put it all together. And your cake's still in the oven for how much longer? Um, I don't know, <laughs> but um, those ones, it'll be in time, it'll be in time. Contestants, you officially have 30 minutes remaining. 30 minutes to bake, everyone. Let's go, guys. Let's go, let's go. Put all my cakes in this one massive AG oven, which I now have one of myself. Hey, oh, why? Aren't you <laughs> a lucky one, <laughs> hey? I just 
My cakes are sticking mm. to the bottom of the tin. I didn't line my tins with parchment paper and everyone else did. I saw them doing it and I thought, Max, line it and that, that. And then I was just rushing so much that I was like, no, there's no time for that. Okay, let's walk away. I'm doing all kinds of whack-a-mole on my cake. Not unscathed, but like not broken. So we move. Zella, do you want to be a doll and just swipe your finger through I will swipe for you, darling. Mm, looking good. Ooh, lemony. Mm. Zella tastes my lemon curd and she's really happy with the flavor. This is exactly what I wanted. What are you making? I'm going to make a lime curd. Oh. I just tasted um, Lesejo's lemon curd. Good. It's a bit of competition there. Lesejo Not to make you so nervous or anything. Good with but flavors. Do you want to come taste mine, Lesejo? Um, Give me some tips. When I have, she's the cake queen. If I have time. She said if she has time. She knows it's a competition. She, she knows. knows. And I see Lesejo in front of me has just made a beautiful lemon curd. So I actually went up and licked and smiled and it was like a whole celebration. And here I am just beating this like really dodgy looking curd that is not getting thicker and the minutes are just ticking down. Let's check on these cakes. Foils are coming off. Yes. Are you happy? I'm happy. So I'm just going to let them bake off for the last five minutes without the foil. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, they look great. <laughs> I still have two more in the oven. Okay. Guys, five minutes left. Final five minutes. Remember, no more baking tomorrow. We've got to complete all baked items today. I'm actually about to give up on this curd, looking at it, shame, shame, shame. And then in a second, it just kind of takes and starts to thicken. And I put the heat up so high, I didn't want scrambled eggs, beating, beating, beating. I just throw it through a sieve and we have curd and I'm actually really pleased. This is it, your final minute in the Taste Master Kitchen. Come Yay! on, guys! Oh! What happened? Um, yeah, that, those ones need to be in there until the last second. Okay. Ten, nine. I pull out my last cake and you can see it slowly sinking a little bit. So I think it's not fully cooked. Yeah, that's tomorrow's problem. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop baking, everyone. Well done. Well done. I think they cooked. Yeah, they're springing back. Oh, you're keep them, Keep them in the tins for a little bit longer. I am. My berry cakes are not cooked, and I can actually see the center of them kind of just dropping. Oh, this one's touch and go. Yeah. I thought this, this these tins would cook quick. Ta -da -da -da. I know it's going to be all. Is it? No, that's good, isn't mm. it? I mean, that is like, suck. We'll just leave that to no, cool. No, it's good. It's this moist. Yeah, keep it in the tin for a little longer. Right, everybody, baking done. Time now to wrap up your cake so they can cool. And tomorrow, we're off to Le Grand Jardin. You ready? Well done, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that was intense. After cooling their bakes overnight, it's time for the final stage of the challenge as Max, Lacerro and Molly arrive at the beautiful Le Grand Jardin, located on the outskirts of Stellenbosch, where the Taste Master will be crowned. This is it. This is the final bake. Let's do this. We got this. I didn't sleep that much last night because I was replaying the potential mistakes that I made in the bake yesterday that resulted in me having some underbaked cakes and maybe what I could have done differently. And then I was also trying to think of solutions as to how I'm gonna fix that. Welcome back to the beautiful Le Grand Jardin. The decor team is very hard at work putting together a spectacular wedding cocktail party for all of our esteemed guests today. Tasting your cakes along with the three of us will be representatives of the brands that partnered with us in this season of the Tastemaster. This includes Royal Baking Powder, Parmalat, KitchenAid, and AEG. Now that your cakes have had time to cool, it's time for you to decorate. You will have two hours to complete your cakes today. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> and for one more time, let's bake more memories. So your time begins in three, two, one. Go for it. Good luck, Woo! everybody. Good luck, everyone.
I'm quite concerned because I have a raw top tier. I also haven't made my buttercream or anything, so I'm quite stressed about today, to be honest. Maxine, we have a little bet that your tablecloth's not going to stay white for very long. <laughs> Why would you say that? <laughs> Luckily, I'm working with all white ingredients. For now, for now. It camouflages very well. Okay, so you're tasting, but what are you tasting? What What is this? This is a whipped cream that I'm going to add to the as a part of my filling. Okay. Mm, for my base here, I'm doing a lime and coconut coat, mm -hmm. a white chocolate whipped cream, um, and I'll put that between the layers before crumb coating. As usual, Max, you've given yourself a lot to do because you have two different flavor tiers and two fillings. I do. I've set the bar for myself and I do think I can do it. I just need to work very, very fast. Starting this bake, I don't have a clear vision of what I want to do exactly. I'm trying to play catch up from yesterday and I hope it doesn't come back to bite me. I'm seeing a lot of butter. Yes. I'm making very buttery buttercreams today. Ooh. Okay, so you're going traditional buttercream uh, frosting, hey? Yes. Flavoring it in any way? Um, I'm just gonna have one chocolate buttercream to go with my chocolate cake and then a cream cheese frosting to go with my vanilla cake and the lemon curd and then just a normal American buttercream to coat the cake overall because it's a buttercream decorated cake. Right, okay. So Molly, I see you're whipping up your ganache. Yes, Is this I the am. same ganache from yesterday or did you have to start over? Uh, no, it's the same ganache from yesterday. It's working, I think. It so looks great. I'm sick of it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so you're working on your Swiss meringue. Eh? Yes. Okay, so confident that that's gonna go according to plan. <laughs> You've made Swiss meringue before? I've made it about uh, three times. Okay. So, I don't know, that definitely doesn't make me an expert, so okay. we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I have whipped up my white chocolate mousse and then I separate them and make two different flavors. One is going to be a lime and coconut flavor and one is going to be a kind of rose and berry flavor to go with each of the tiers that they're going to be on. I'm just going to level all my cakes for now. This is the one I was worried about. If the cake sinks, it means it's undercooked. So that means the middle of my cake's raw. You have to cut it until the sinking stops. Yeah, it's still raw. It's not the end of the world, I can just shovel the gross part out. Oh, people are doing their cake. We're half an hour in and I have my first tier in the fridge. I'm normally the last person to have something in the fridge or on the table, so it feels really good to have quite a large portion of my cake done. Contestants, we are officially 30 minutes into this final challenge. Let's go. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ooh, Mark, can I taste the cookie? Sure, it's a little bit dry. I'm going to turn Yeah, yeah. Molly, you happy? Uh, yeah. I overheard I so. you saying something about a dry cake. I think it's just because it's been in the fridge for really long. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, let's see if it picks up some temperature. Maybe it comes back to its natural state. Lesejo, how are we looking 30 minutes in? I'm only starting with my small tear. Nothing has been stacked. Nothing, okay, so this is your first go at it. Yes. I tasted a little bit of my cake. It tastes really good, so I'm happy about that. Are these the cakes that you pulled from the oven, like? Yes. These on are three my, seconds remaining? Yes, my ninja move. But th this looks great. I think this is a great start. Up next, working outdoors for the first time, they must fight the elements to complete their wedding cakes. Choose Parmalat for better meals, better desserts, and better times together. Parmalat makes life better and better. Parmalat. So Max, these are obviously the cakes that didn't get the full amount of time in the oven as what you had hoped for. Mm -hmm. um, but how are they looking? And do you have a plan? So we have raw okay. centers. Yep cooked outside and I am thinking to cut the center out yeah and maybe do like a little surprise center filled with blueberries white chocolate because that is the flavor of this cake sure sounds like a yeah. sound plan okay all the thank best thank you like. thank you so much can I get your help what's going on moles it keeps hardening that's because it's cold out here but like like crumbly crumbly Oh, but then it whips smooth again, so it's definitely not seized. No, I had to reheat it and whip it. Okay, but then it's not seized, so it is just cold. It's a temperature thing. So, so if I put it in my cake and it sets, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. 
is what is this hole about? <laughs> there was a, <laughs> an uncooked part. It's the what? There's an uncooked part, so I just cut it out and you're gonna have a chocolate surprise in there. No surprises. So many, so many surprises today. <laughs> um, I think I'm making plans. This layer is looking dubiously tall and hollow, which impacts its structure. I mean it's strength a little bit, but nothing like some berry goo just to hold together both your life and your empty cake. That's what I go for. <laughs> Lisekho, what are you working on there? I'm just melting my chocolate over a double boiler to add it to my cream cheese frosting. Okay. And you're happy with that tear that we saw crumb coated? It looked pretty good from yes. a distance. I'm very happy with the way it looks. I'm happy that I have a nice even amount of cream cheese frosting cakes and the lemon curd, which is so good. Why guys. do you have so much left? Because it's a small tear. Oh, okay. I'm only asking because I did take get a sneak taste yesterday and, and it was really them. good. So I don't ah. want to be... You don't want to be messing up <laughs> you know the <laughs> exactly. offering. I'm starting with my lemon cake and I'm putting a border of my Swiss meringue buttercream. Then I'm putting my chocolate ganache and my raspberry filling. And then I'm stacking my other cake on top. Excuse me? It's a cake. Excuse me. It's so don't embarrass me. Please don't embarrass me. No, this is your name on it. It's called Lesejo's Buttercream Green. <laughs> so if it doesn't work, it's all your fault, Lesejo. No, it has worked. It has worked. <laughs> if my buttercream helps Max secure the win, I'll be definitely asking her for that AEG stove. <laughs> Contestants, this is your halfway time call. You officially have one hour left. Come on, guys. Last push. Keep going. I've not even made my buttercream properly yet, so these cakes are not crumb coated, which is slightly concerning. I have one question. Yes. What does crumb coat mean? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so crumb coating is pretty much what Molly's doing right now, is the first very thin layer of um, frosting on your cake, just to make sure that if any crumbs do move, uh, they stick to that layer so that your outside finish it's has smooth. no crumbs. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I was waiting for them to add crummies to no, the no. <laughs> I'm trying to make it look neat, but I'm just, I think I'm just going to say that that's part of the vibe. Are you going to do another layer of frosting? No. Yes. Oh, you are, okay. Because yeah. I want a more monochromatic cake. I got you. So your crumb coat was the chocolate coat yes. layer, and now you're buttercreaming with your regular yes. butter. Got you. I decided to go for the ribbon finish because I think if you're going to do a smooth finish, especially on such a large cake, it really needs to be perfect to be great. And I'm just not sure about the time. Um, in addition to that, I think I'm going to have a smooth top, so I think a bit of contrast and different techniques will actually be nice to show. Lesa, do you know that your um, buttercream recipe is apparently what's pulling people through this final? How do you feel about that? I hope she served it justice because you can't have a buttercream that doesn't work out under my name. <laughs> I didn't hear what that was. It was a brand issue. <laughs> so, so, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm always happy to share recipes. I love that. So is there another layer of um, buttercream going on there? Nope, that's the vibe so of the cake. So naked cake vibes. Yeah, okay. Cake. What are we do looking at in terms of decorations then, if, um, if the I'm frosting part is pretty much done? I'm piling on berries, like a whole bunch of berries. Okay. So you're entering home straight. Yeah, I'm right. just adding a bit of color to the bottom of this tier, just so that the whole thing is not going to be plain white, and I want it to be quite a rough look. Oh, uh, what's is it? That what you're going for? Ombre vibe. Just want to add a bit of color around the bottom. Oh, so it's just a, a color just splash. Like, yeah, kind of like someone took a paintbrush and just went around the bottom a couple of times. I don't actually know exactly what I'm doing here. I know this is not how you put color on a cake and just go with it. Molly, that looks so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> I look over at Molly's cakes. I do notice a bit sideways stacking. I hope that's what she intended and I hope it doesn't fall over. Oh, that's... <laughs> it's so skew. Once I've stacked my cakes, they're looking just as skew as next door. I am worried. Contestants, we're entering the final 30 minutes of this final challenge. Let's finish up. Woo! 30 minutes, crunch time! I just don't think that there's time for these kind of mistakes, shoving dial sticks through the side of your tear. I think it'll hold together, it just... 
It's gonna need some band aid, body cream. Shame. Oh, Lesejo's doing something exciting. Come, come, come. <laughs> Zola, stay where you are. No babes. ways. <laughs> I love how they all have made such different cakes. Very different, eh? It and also speaks to their personality. And how people interpret your style so differently. I'm so happy with the way it looks. It's rustic yet sophisticated. And I think it's a perfect fit for a wedding. Are you happy with this, Molly? It's, it's, if I look at it, <laughs> you know, from this angle, it's, it's kind of slanting. You're not worried no, about that? it's okay. only slanting because the cakes are slanting. Why don't you say it's the style? <laughs> okay, yeah, it's leaning tower piece of I, I would have said it's the table, but <laughs> the table is not we'll helping. Go with all of your excuses. Contestants, this is your 10 minute call. You have 10 minutes left to finish your cakes, okay? Yes? I'm done with my cake, really. I'm just working on decorations just to fill up the not so pretty parts of the cake. So I'm busy with my origami and then I'm gonna try and make some crinoline. Um, in my jug, I just have 100 mils of water and six grams of wafer paper just to make a sort of lace effect when I put it on the hot mm. nonstick pan. I knew I wanted to include flowers on this cake because I personally love flowers and I love flowers on a wedding cake as well. So, I have some pressed flowers that I made on a workshop with my dad actually, so they're quite special to me. And so I bought those along today to put on the cake. I'm very happy with the way my crinoline's looking. I wish I could have made some more, but time is not on my side. I'll just use the bits of it that I have. 10, 9. Countdown has begun. These are the last 10 seconds I'll be cooking for the Taste Master SA Season 4, and it's surreal. One. Stop decorating. Yeah. Well done. We're done, folks. That's a wrap. I can't believe we're actually done. <laughs> I'm not ready. I know. <laughs> no, no. I love us. Oh my god. It's actually so emotional. I know. <laughs> Sorry, this is not the emotional part yet. Trust me, it's coming. <laughs> I'm actually so happy um, and proud of myself today. This wasn't exactly what I had in mind, but the fact that I have a finished cake that is not a naked cake in two hours makes me really, really happy. I think maybe I could have done a bit more, but I'm happy with what I made and hopefully it's enough. But I'm very proud of myself. I'm really happy with my cake. I'm happy with the way it looks in the time that we had. And yeah, I hope they enjoy it as much as I enjoyed making it. Next up, the judges taste their finale bakes, and then it's up to the VIP guests to weigh in. Share your love and creativity for baking. Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Contestants, well done and congratulations on completing this final challenge. There's no more after this, which is kind of sad, but it's done. It's done now. It was a big task, but all of you created spectacular bikes. It feels a little bit surreal that this is the final day we will ever gather as this Taste Master family. Inside on display, we've got your beautiful cakes, along with the hors d'oeuvres that you created in the first part of this challenge. And now it's time for the final judging. It's almost unreal that this is the last time I'll be judged in this competition. To help us today, we've invited one more special guest to join us. She's a food writer, a TV personality, and a restaurateur. Please welcome the beautiful Chef Nti. <laughs> Chef Nti is so awesome. She's obviously super, super amazing at what she does, but she also brings this fun, really present energy with her. She's someone I follow on social media, and I'll be looking forward to her tasting all our bakes today. Before 2015, I was in the fashion industry. I had a cleaning business, facilities management, but then 2015, I shut down everything. When everything went down, I decided if I start over, I want to do it from my point of passion. I actually feel like chefing chose me because I've been cooking from when I was 13. My friends were there in my neighborhood, told me, are you there? Because they know there's food at home. I'm the one cooking. So food was the easiest thing, you know, because I love to cook. It doesn't feel like work. Food literally saved my life because I don't think that, you know, had I not found this journey, I would be the same, this happy, because for me, it's not work. I would cook for free and people want to pay me to do it, you know? So food saved me for sure. <laughs> hey, J. 
Chaji. Hello. So excited to be part of the finale. Yeah, you've come at the perfect time. Contestants, this round of judging will work differently to all the others. You will not be present for this one. So you will be able to go and enjoy the beautiful grounds at Le Grand Jardin, while the four of us will get tasting, after which we will invite our VIP guests to also taste your hors d'oeuvres and cakes and give their vote for their favorite. We will then tally up their votes and along with our votes, deliberate over who will be the final winner. On that note, it's time for us to taste some cakes. Off you go. To complement the occasion, florist Andre Lummers and his team have created a beautiful display inspired by Zoe's dream wedding look and feel. Zoe is one of those uncomplicated brides. Um, she wanted neutral tones um, that would complement the cakes. So we went for fresh, bright blooms um, and neutral pots. It will go easy with any bride for any occasion. And I think she'll love it. It looks fresh, it looks funky, but it's still traditional. It's nerve-wracking not being part of the judging because you want to get that feedback. Like you want to know, is my cake dry or not? Which is what I'm worried about. I'm so scared about mine actually. Why? I think mine's gonna be a bit dry. So did you not add simple syrup? I did, but I don't know if I added enough. Did you like just brush the syrup or did you like pour oh, the syrup? No, I brushed it. <laughs> yeah. First up, Molly, naked cake, vanilla, raspberry, very beautiful. I love a naked cake, especially for a rustic themed wedding. I think this would do really well. I think this is gonna be a very interesting bit of judging, just because Chef T, this is the first perspective you have of anything. Yeah. The three of us have walked the journey, we yeah. know what went wrong, what went right. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be a very different and interesting perspective. I'm excited, I mean, I can't wait to taste the cake. <laughs> <laughs> There's like moments where you're like, oh. Whatever happens, happens. But then you see them starting to cut into your cake. You're like, oh no. Mm. I think Molly did a fantastic job. Yeah. She stuck to her vision, her inspiration. That definitely comes through. Mm -hmm. For me, in terms of flavor, I enjoy the combination of raspberry and chocolate. I think yeah. that that's a great combination. The smoothness of her ganache, the texture of it, all really pleasant. What lets it down for me is the texture of the sponge. It's just a tad too dry. I agree with you, Zola. I mean, the combination of the raspberry and chocolate, perfect. Mm. But I just don't like how the ganache almost stands there on its own. Mm. I would have loved for it to be part of the cake. For me, I have to say even the overall look of this cake is incredible and the flavor combinations work really well. Her icing for me was also quite delicious. It wasn't too sweet. Mm. Yeah. So it was yeah. well balanced. Yeah. yeah, great point. And I think that is masterful. Mm. But again, in balance to that, the texture of the sponge yeah. leaves so much to be desired. Great flavors, great execution. Absolutely, yeah. she can be proud of this creation. Oh, 100%. Mm. I'm nervous, I'm nervous. I'm hoping that they get that, you know, like biting into cake. Yes. And it's just like, mm, cake. <laughs> That's what I want to yeah. get to have oh. that feeling. Cake table number two. I think this is an art deco version of, of Zoe's inspiration. Yes. Um, very elegant, I think it looks really beautiful. And she's got two flavors in her cake, so a lot of cake for us to taste. Yay. Mm. Beautiful cake. Mm -hmm. I mean, how amazing does this look? Yeah. The Seho did a fantastic job here. And what I love about this cake is the consistency of the crumb of the chocolate cake specifically. Mm -hmm. And when you pick up those hints of jam, it really comes through, it's beautiful. In my opinion, she was shy on the lemon curd. Yeah. I would have loved to have that flavor in the vanilla cake. Uh, I think that's the crux of this cake. Mm -hmm. And she was a bit heavy with the butter and the buttercream. It impacts the way that I experience this cake. Yeah. And for me, that was a little bit heavy. So a little bit shy and a little bit heavy. I'm excited about the lemon curd. I'm excited about the raspberry, but I feel like there needs, there needs to be more, mm -hmm. you know? She was a little shy when it comes to making sure that those flavors come into the cake. When you slice that cake, I got so excited <laughs> seeing the layers. I mean, her cake is beautiful on its appearance. Yeah. I love the elegance and there's a little bit of an understated simplicity to it that is very me. So I really love how she decorated her cake. In terms of baking technicalities, she nailed it. That chocolate sponge, beautiful texture, wonderful tender crumb, vanilla cake, also really great flavor. I agree with Ndi, 
lacking in the amount of those flavors that would take it over the edge. It's such a lucky packet though, because when like when you make these cakes, if you make like a whole extra one, you can taste, but for this and spend in the fridge overnight, I yes. actually don't know. Don't know yeah. what so it it's, like. Like, it's a thrill for all of us. Yeah. We're going in blind. Oh my gosh. Mm. So for our final cake, we have Maxine's two-tier cake. At the bottom, she went for coconut and lime. And at the top, she went for blueberry and rose. So really playing around with flavors. She seems very adventurous with flavors. So I want to see how those flavor combinations, you know, taste. Yo, let's get into it. Yes, please. There it comes. I see the stuff. <gasps> oh my. Oh. Aren't you glad you cut it in half? Oh my goodness! Right? Blueberries! Wow. <laughs> I love how intentional she is with her flavor combinations. It hits you. I mean, the coconut comes through so beautifully right here. And the blueberries are oh, magic. For me, I think the wow factor, she nailed it. I mean, we yeah. all went, oh! Yeah. In terms of technicality with her bake, the bottom sponge, Delicious, great texture, great crumb, fantastic coconut flavor. Yum. The purple sponge, she saved it. I was skeptical about the cutting out the center part, but you know, she rescued it and it wasn't a half-baked attempt at saving something. She went all in and she created a beautiful surprise. My one flavor critique is that it's more rose heavy than it is blueberry flavor, because if you don't get one of the whole blueberries that is part of the surprise, it kind of just tastes of rose to me. I love how you say this is a rescue. I mean, as a guest here, I have no you idea know. that we had an oopsie. You know, I'm no. just thinking this is a nice reveal. You cut a cake and there's a nice surprise in there. So good exactly. for her. It's impressive. And that's a very, very significant ability to be able to do that. I personally love how this cake really packs a punch mm. in terms of its flavor. You taste the lime, you taste the coconut, and they marry beautifully together. The mousse layer in between the cake also has that zestiness coming through from the lime. That mousse is light fluffy and like 100%. got a bit of zippiness to it. Yeah. Goes a long way. Yeah. Yeah. It does. I think that we have a very tough decision to make. So while we ponder over our decision, let's invite our VIP guests to come in and make their decision. Joining the tasting panel are Tastemaster SA partners, Royal Baking Powder, Parmalat AEG and KitchenAid. Their votes combined will count as a fifth judge. I think the contestants really put in a lot of work and it's really amazing to see how much they could do in the amount of time that they had. A really impressive work across the board. Everything was absolutely divine, super delicious. The cake that stood out mostly for me by looking at it was cake number one. That definitely caught my eye. It was definitely cake number two. I think the flavors of the lemon curd and the chocolate really paired well together. So I enjoyed the chocolate and the lemon and curd from table number two, as well as the coconut and lime from number three. Definitely the blueberry one. That one was the best for me. I just love the very complex nature of it. Cake number three was really great. The blueberry with the rose water, really a very nice touch in there. And then that lime that just cuts through to balance that sweetness was really amazing. Congratulations to our episode 11 viewer competition winner, Unesa Kasim, who was inspired by a childhood memory of her mother's cinnamon waffle cookies on a Sunday afternoon. Unesa has won a KitchenAid stand mixer, as well as a 1,000 Rand Parmalat hamper. Contestants, the moment has arrived. We have reached the pinnacle of this fantastic competition. Congratulations on making it this far. It was not easy and well done today. And to our sponsors, I think it is important that you understand by the time that they reach this stage of the competition, their lives are undoubtedly changed forever, so without you that would not be possible. A big thank you. Contestants, I'm pretty sure you're dying to know what us judges felt. It's a very emotional moment. I'm probably going to start crying. I didn't cry the whole season, but now it's kind of building up a bit. 
So we'll start off with cake number one. Molly, that was yours. We know you're the youngest in the competition and you blew us away by delivering not a two-tier, but a three-tier cake. That Swiss meringue buttercream was unbelievable and so well balanced. And we love the freshness that your cake offered. However, when we cut into it, we wished we had that same freshness on your sponge. But overall, your cake was phenomenal. We loved how your vision on paper came to life. Thank you so much. Biker number two, Le Sejo. I just want to know what they think and I can't wait to hear. Such an impressive statement of a cake, so elegant. The texture of your cake was world class. Your curd was delicious and it cut through the butteriness of your icing, but it was lacking. We wanted more of it. And the same with your jam. Your buttercream was a little bit fatty, that stood out to us, but in general, such a high level execution. Well done. Thank you. Cake number three, Max. I understand that there was a little bit of an oopsie moment. I wasn't there to see it where you didn't have enough time and your top tier wasn't cooked all the way. And to rescue that, you came up with a surprise moment. Perfect, love it. And uh, your sponge cake, such a perfect cake. I loved your mousse. The mousse was so perfect, it was so moist. It really helped the buttercream because the buttercream was slightly rich, it was slightly fatty. And the top tier, you had rose and blueberry. The blueberry flavor wasn't there. But overall, the cake was amazing and well done on how you rescued that oopsie moment. Thank you. I have a sense of peace where no matter what happens, I am so happy and really, really just grateful for this journey. To the three of you, I could not express more how proud I am. Your journey in this competition has been profound. It's been such a pleasure to watch you all grow as bakers, grow as people. And whatever happens today, I know it's cliche, but it's very true. You are all winners. <laughs> Just before the announcement, a quick reminder of what you've been baking for. To get your career started, Royal Baking Powder is giving the winner 50,000 Rand in cash. I think these contestants are very talented. What they've learned in the last I think, 12 weeks, is it, it's incredible. I mean, on every table, there was something that I loved. And I'm sure our Royal Baking Powder had a lot to do with that as well. So it's going to be a very tough choice for the judges, but I'm sure the winner would be very well deserving. And good luck to all three. The winner will also be receiving 100,000 rands worth of kitchen aid equipment. As KitchenAid, the journey that we've had with Testmaster SA this far has been amazing. We are very honored to be part of this initiative. We can definitely see that the brand's growing and we obviously love to see what the contestants has done with our products. And of course, a hundred thousand rands worth of AEG appliances to challenge the expected in the kitchen. I think what was great this year is the fact that you can really see how there was growth from that first episode where you initially thought, hold on, some of these people will never make it. And then to see someone like Max in the final is really amazing. It's great to see them adapt to the circumstances and also just become more than what they were than when they started. And on top of all of that, the winner will also get an amazing opportunity to cement their career as a TV chef and personality on the Expresso Morning Show. <laughs> it's now the exciting part is what next? So we hope to see these three go really far to become faces of television, faces of food, and we'll see them one day be the judges like Fritz and Zola now to announce who the winner of the Tastemaster SA 2023 is. And the winner is... Max! <laughs> What the flip? I did not see that coming and my whole body just starts doing these like twitches. I'm quite overwhelmed to be honest. Maxine, it was a continuous showcasing of absolute innovation. You have this adventurous spirit about you and it was an absolute privilege to be a part of it. Congratulations. Congratulations, Max! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> oh, man. Even more than that, to symbolize your win, your wedding cake pin. Chef and tea will do the honors. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Congratulations, Max. <laughs> well done. I'm happy for Max, but it's, mm. it's tough. I put my heart and soul into that cake. I'm so proud of Max. I think she really, really deserves it. So I'm very happy for her. <laughs> this part of it is cool, but it's such a small part of what it's actually been. <laughs> because the people that has brought into my life, my heart has just been so filled with love through this show. I can't actually say it. But I'm so grateful. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, on that high note, once more, our Taste Master, Maxine Scaling. This experience has changed me for the better. The way I cook has clearly changed and I've grown to become someone who can be called sophisticated and elegant when it comes to my cooking and that's something I'll be holding on to. I suppose what is in the future is actually furthering a career as a foodie presenter on the Expresso Morning Show, which is honestly a dream come true. And the fact that I get to have something that I've loved my whole life now be something that I actually do for a living feels like, I mean, isn't that the dream? Uh, never feel good production.